Well, Mayor Zach, welcome back to Mayor's Monday. Good to be back here in your in your office. We don't have any visuals yeah. this time, mm -hmm. but we still have a lot of good stuff to uh, to talk about. And, and first off, uh, a pretty exciting event. Every any whenever any new business comes to town, it's always exciting. But you just got a Chevy dealership back, so that's I mean a really big piece of. Uh, piece of the economy coming back to rapids here yeah, it's good news because in 2008 when gm uh announced a number of franchises that were going to close in the downturn that hit uh the national economy uh, we lost a chevy dealership here in wisconsin rapids so there was a company that came in the last uh, couple of years that acquired um two dealerships that uh, folks that were retiring and so now they're bringing uh, gm and the buick products as not as well as a chevy dealership uh, to wisconsin rapids so last week uh, we celebrated the grand opening of that dealership uh, the wheeler family acquired a blighted corner uh, on the west end of our town, um, redeveloped that site and put up a beautiful Chevy dealership. Um, so they'll be selling new and, and used uh, uh, vehicles out of that property. And uh, they're, that's the first of three phases. So not only did they make a very significant investment in the construction of that project, you know, a couple million bucks when you factor all the dynamics plus all the inventory, uh, but they also are gonna be doing a few other um, remodels of the existing uh, GM and Buick uh, lines that they have just down the street. So really on the, on the west end of our town, the significance of it is a couple of things. One, uh, it's an anchor on the west end of our town. Um, uh, kind of on the on the flip side, we've got the Rapids Mall or the former Rapids Mall downtown on the other end of West Grand. So it's neat to have two major anchor investments happening uh, on the near term uh, on that corridor. Uh, but also just the fact that when you have um, retail activity like that happening in the community, that sales tax gets generated and, 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 uh, and goes right back into the county and obviously the state's economy. So we want as much of that pie as we can get from the county standpoint. Uh, obviously, it doesn't impact the city's revenue, but having that new act, that new investment, and having a redevelopment on a on a major corridor and thoroughfare uh, is a is a nice sign of of economic uh, confidence and investment that that family made in this community. Yeah, and, and it seems like uh, you know having a dealership like that too is just a a, a big thing. That's high paying jobs that are going to come in. You know, a lot of uh, obviously that's going to end up bringing in then to mechanic work and, and possibility for you know, repairs going on, that, that's a lot of money coming into that little section right there of town on the west side, which I know has been your focus, redevelopment right. in that area. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it really is true that the economic multiplier of auto uh, industry is huge, you know, whether it's manufacturing the products or on the retail sale or even on the service side. So it's really exciting to have their uh, investment here in the community. You know, they created six new jobs in the mechanic area, obviously the new sales uh, folks that are on their sales force as well. So uh, it's really a, a nice thing, you know, it, it, it goes along way when you're trying to um, you know demonstrate community success especially on a, on a visible corridor with a major redevelopment yeah so that's a, a project that gives a lot of people reason to be excited here in, mm -hmm. in Wisconsin Rapids and of course I know you yourself are, are excited as well because you have a brand new council that's yeah. going to start up here or just started up here this week of course you won re-election so mm -hmm. congratulations Thank on you. that as well yeah. What's your uh, your goals with the with the new council here for the next couple of years? Well, we've got three new members that joined the city council. Um, five returning, or actually one returned through the election, and four are uh, we're not up for re-election. Um, but uh, really, to continue a, a, an attitude of professionalism and civility. One thing I think our council has um, really become known for is the fact that they're very professional and, and that it, they don't get into personal attacks of each other or of, of, of the mayor or any other city staff. And I hope to continue that trend that you know, we continue to stay focused on what are the priorities of the city and we, we stay business minded in that regard that we're here to serve the residents. Uh, the petty politics that sometimes can come alongside governing bodies is not appropriate and so I'm excited uh, to work with the new members and obviously uh, to welcome their ideas and their energy um, to the process because we've got a lot of uh, projects uh, underway and we need to continue um, to see them through because the city's invested a lot of time either in the planning of those uh, projects or in the financing uh, with with hard cash and so I'm excited to be able to work with the new city council and you know, really work with them over the next year and then obviously the next election cycle for the other four comes up. So, uh, but fortunate, I've been uh, fortunate to have a great city council to work with to this point and, uh, and hope that it continues. Yeah, you don't do any of this on your own that's at right all. a lot of people like to think so a they lot do. of people need to, somebody to blame that's right Whether, the mayor takes it yeah the mayor, broad shoulders you, right you have to you have to take that i mean that's mm -hmm. that's one thing i respect about your position as mayor one thing i probably could never do but uh the council 
is really the one that kind of has a big say in That's all right. this. Yeah. So you don't do this on your own. So you've got to have that great relationship with your council. Exactly. While the mayor of, of this city and the, the form of government we have with a strong mayor council form without a city administrator, you know, they're definitely the shots are at the mayor oftentimes because that's the person that's running the show fairly. And I think, uh, but you're right, the, the common council, the city council really has, um, retains the authority when it comes down to approving my proposed executive budget uh, to any of the other initiatives that we put forward. So we're going to continue down a path. Um, we've got, you know, from a housing stock standpoint, from an economic development, I guess, objective, housing remains one of our, our challenges and we're making great inroads in that. Uh, we have more to do. Uh, and that really connects with our objective of, of attracting and retaining young adults and young families. And if you don't have the housing stock available, you're not going to retain not only your empty nesters and your retirees, which are still an important um, the dynamic of the community to retain for the purpose of economic spend and just aging in place and being able to stay in the community that they uh, lived most of their lives in, um, but also the attraction of young, talented workers that our employers and businesses are always looking for more talent in, in our housing stock and kind of an attractive community all play a role in that. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, when you're looking at the new members of the council, particularly, what kind of training do you put them through? I mean, when, when do they get the test on Robert's rule of order? Yeah, that's you know, a great question. Like well, I just reached out to the council president because that's a good opportunity for us to be able to in a kind of unified front, acknowledge that there should be some training, even refresher. I mean, all of us could go through a refresher training because if you don't use some of the mechanics of it, you forget it. And uh, so we're gonna put um, through kind of a, a formal program we'll have here at the city, I hope. We've done it in the past anyway, and, and I hope to continue that with this council. But we've had a professor from UWSP come in to talk about the role of an older person, a very neutral party. It doesn't get into the politics. Um, the professor that actually I had, uh, but he had come over a number of years to the city to talk about the role of an older person. Um, and then there's also the, the League of Wisconsin Municipalities has uh, Government 101, which is a really good training for newly elected officials. Um, really, uh, two of the three don't have any government background bef uh, of any service, so uh, it'll be good for them to go through a training uh, if, if they make the time for it and, and take it up. You know, and opportunity to. I know uh, one thing that we have coming up in Wausau, they actually have a retreat where everybody kind of gets away for a weekend and they bounce some ideas off of each other to kind of set an agenda, if you will, for the year. Are you going to have that as well for your Never council? done anything like that. It's very interesting. I'd like to hear more about it because uh, it may be something that we could we could benefit from having something similar here. I'll put Mayor Milky in touch with that you. That sounds back. good, yeah. And uh, one more thing before we let you go here. was a story we had talked about uh, kind of late la or early last week. Uh, you had a uh, speaking about the dynamic that you have with your council, you had a, a veto actually of a proposal that they had brought forward to you regarding the sale of agricultural products in residential areas. Kind of take us through that and where you see this uh, particular ordinance possibly going. Sure. Well, the history on it simply is a resident uh, was selling pumpkins out of their front yard. Uh, we don't allow the sale of, of, of products or commercial activity in residential districts. It's not unlike ordinances that exist in every other community around us. Um, so the council wanted to consider this item where they would allow the sale of produce and other agricultural products um, in residential neighborhoods. And unfortunately, um, I felt the ordinance was very broad and very um, uh, loosely written to allow anything that has an agricultural connotation. So if you look up at the definition, you could be selling Christmas trees to uh, meat and dairy products and all out of residential homes. Well, at the same time, the city has a very liberal um, farm stand and um, uh, farmer's market uh, uh, program. So if anyone wants to sell these things in commercial districts where commercial activity is, is governed and where it's the most appropriate, they could do it with a simple application and get approval for it. Um, and so I felt very strongly that this had a negative um, impact on health, safety, and welfare of our residents if, in fact, many, many people decided to take upon uh, the sale of agricultural products in their in their own residential property. So I vetoed the ordinance. Uh, it actually failed the planning commission. It failed the first time on the city council, and then they got enough votes just narrowly to approve it. The third time it had to go through, and at that point I vetoed uh, the item uh, within the five day window and sent it back uh, so the council to reconsider it. They failed to override my veto on Tuesday, and uh, it sounds like they're going to uh, want to see another variety of that come back. 
um, I still ma maintain we have commercial districts and industrial districts and residential districts for a purpose. If we start legislating or drawing up rules for one individual of many in the city, um, it really opens up a door and potentially a Pandora's box to allow revisions to ordinances simply to allow certain activity that may happen in disparate forms across the city. So I'm pretty concerned about that because it does set a precedent. Um, am I against selling pumpkins? Absolutely not. Am I against entrepreneurship? Believe me, I am not. Uh, but at the same time, there are rules and just because you don't like the rules doesn't mean you just go ahead and rewrite them. And that's essentially what's happening here. Yeah, and, and you talk about your, uh, or your ordinances for selling agricultural products in commercial district, the farmer's market type mm -hmm. setups. You know, how, how do, is it pretty easy for folks to kind Very of get easy. involved in that? You know, how, how do they do that? Yeah, we've got three farmer's markets in the city. And uh, so folks want to sell their produce on uh, Mondays, Thursdays, Saturdays, and there may even be another day that there's a, portion, a part of the day that farmer's markets happen. It's very inexpensive to, to get a farm stand approval. Even if you're on a commercial district, you can actually set up a, a legitimate farm stand uh, outside of the farmer's markets um, to sell your product. And uh, so there's ample opportunities for folks to do that. So they just contact your office and you'll- They go to community development. Uh, yeah, community development does the permits. Each farmer's market is independently run. Uh, mm -hmm. So the city doesn't have any any workings of the farmers markets; those are all independently done. Uh, but the farm stands do require a city permit. So that there is there is opportunity like that here in, in Rapids. That's right for for the free economy. I yeah, guess you so could folks say. come on the summer or in the fall during harvest season, they'll see maybe a dozen farm stands set up along Eighth Street, and so we've got plenty of space and opportunities for folks that want to do that. Yeah. Great to see, especially you know, in a market like this, in a state like this, where agriculture is absolutely yeah to support that industry. I mean, there's uh, even coming into town where a lot of that stuff is produced. You see a lot of farm stands, and I, I think that's that's great. It's neat to see. Anything else that you'd like to add, man? No, I look forward to our next conversation. All right. All right.